sometimes we find it difficult getting the exact brush we need from our search or trying to buy one brush or the other well there is this particular brush i've been looking for so long i couldn't get this brush until i actually create this brush myself and now um, creating this brush myself gives me the ability to put in the features i want this brush to give to me and most of you have seen me make use of this brush or if you have not seen me make use of this brush i have already make use of this brush in one of my artwork which really really look so good and um really look more like a traditional artwork so in today's video i'm going to show you guys how to create your own pencil shading brush in photoshop and if you follow all this process of creating the brush you can actually make use of this process to create any brush of your choice that is really going to be having a texture feel with all right back into photoshop so right here i have a new document i've created now this document will be the document which we'll be using in creating and testing our brush if you check the link in the description you are going to get a texture file a paper like texture which we are going to be using for the brush that we really make us have that really make us have that kind of um a pencil shading whenever we are shading with a real pencil and on paper now when you download the file this is how it is going to be this is just the texture you are going to get now first of all we are going to import this texture into photoshop and work on it then define this as a pattern which we are going to use to create our brush now if you've not watched the previous video which i did on how to create your own pencil brush i'm going to leave a link in the description to where you are going to watch that video okay so once you get these files ready and everything is ready go over to file and hit on new we are going to create a new document which we'll be using in preparing the texture we are going to be using for this project all right so i'm going to make use of the same square now you can make this any size of your choice but i just really like everything i do to be on high res now i want to create a high definition brush so that whenever i shade it's really going to give me something nice and so now depending on the kind of pc you are making use of you can go lower than this like you can change the resolution to somewhere around 150 and you can change the width and the height to something lower than this but just make sure that you are making use of square so that each size will be appropriate so now click on that and hit on create now we've created a new document it is time for us to import our texture into photoshop now import drag and drop the texture into the document you just created resize this texture resize this texture to fill document which you just created now this is all you are going to do right here in this document which you have created so now go over to file and then save this document now if you want when, when saving this document depending on how you want this to be but i'm going to save this document as uh, i'm going to save this document as a png because i really want this to maintain all the qualities of this texture we all know that png help us to retain the tech the quality of our image rather than making use of a jpeg because jpeg is kind of like a processed version of our image that it's really going to compress some certain part of it so i'm just going to leave this to untitled 2 because the name doesn't really matter i'm going to hit on save and okay so right here i can go ahead now and delete this texture we have right here because it's no longer useful now go back into the place where you save the texture which you just created right now drag and drop this texture into photoshop so what i'm going to do at this point i'm going to right click and hit on merge down so that we have everything on one layer then i'll go over to edit and then i'll come down to the part that says define pattern click that and i'm just going to name this pattern too because i already created a pattern before so i'm going to hit on ok now we can go back to the previous document which we create now you have two ways of creating a brush in photoshop is that you want to start from scratch or you just want to edit one brush or the other in photoshop so what i'm going to do i'm going to edit one brush available in photoshop so that we are not going to spend so much time 
trying to do all this in photoshop now if you want to understand how you can create your own brush from scratch in photoshop you can watch the previous video which i did and that doesn't really cover everything about creating a brush from scratch in photoshop is just really going to give you an idea maybe i'm still going to work on the third part of this video where i will actually show you guys how to create a brush from scratch in photoshop so now back in this document you just want to select any brush of your choice so i will advise you to make use of a brush from the um from the general brushes available in photoshop so at this point i'm just going to pick any brush of my choice so right here i'm just going to pick on this soft run brush and now once you've picked a brush just go over to windows and then open up your brush setting once your brush setting is once your brush setting is open up at this point you are going to determine how you want your brush to be now if you want the brush to have the um feature of the opacity the pre the pressure opacity and the pressure flow sensitivity you can actually put that here so first of all what i'm going to do i will go over to um the transfer inside of this transfer this transfer uh, help us to control the opacity and the uh, and the flow so when you can see right here we have the opacity jitter and we have the flow jitter and if you see right here you can see that the um opacity jitter it's set to pen pressure which is the more harder you press the more visible this brush is really going to be so right here we have the flow jitter now if you want this to have the flow you can also do that so right here i'm going to turn this on and set it to pen pressure so that we're going to get that flow right here now you can see the difference between what we have before and just turning that on right here now we have the feel of the kind of brush we want but we really don't have that texture that is really going to give us that kind of traditional shading look which we are really going for so now you just have to go over to texture and i will go over to tech te to texture te 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 texture so we go over to texture you can see the kind of changes that has happened to our brush so now we'll paint right here you can see what is going on now this is not really giving us what we want so first of all i'm going to create dark i'm going to select the darker color right here so that we can really see everything that is going on so now you can really see we're having some spacing and so on on this brush because of the texture we apply now this is not really what we want so this is what i'm going to do from this drop down menu i already have this texture before which i have already created but the one which we created it's going to be the last one right here so this is the one we created before we get into this document and it's the last one right here so now just select that texture and once you select the texture it's just automatically select right here just double click on it and it will select now if you want to play around with all these values you have right here you can go ahead and play around with all those values now one important settings which we really need to do here is to play around with the mode of the texture so now since this is set to height that's why we are not seeing anything right here so what we want to do we just want to extract only the texture the pencil field texture the um rough texture or the noise on that texture and apply that noise to our brush now in order for us to do that we just have to set the blend mode to multiply and now when we set the blend mode to multiply it's going to mix the darker part of that texture with our brush to give us that kind of feel we want so now when we shade right here you can see what we have so right here you can see now as we paint we are having the texture which is exactly what we want now if you go in and start using this to shade the portrait it is really going to give you that traditional feel so everything we see right here is just the everything we see right here is just the paper like texture which we applied right here which is really going to help you shade so much and very well now now that we have done with the settings now if you want to add up any other settings to the brush you can actually go ahead and add any other settings to the brush but to me i'm totally okay with the settings i have right here based on the brush so now it is time for me to export this brush to save this brush and actually export it or maybe copy this brush to another pc of mine or actually share this brush for download or save this brush but before you do that you need to save the brush first so now to save the brush the plus icon you have 
right at the bottom right of your brush settings just click on that and this window is going to open up for you now inside of this window we have um three options right here we have capture brush size and preset include two settings and include color now the most important two right here is capture brush size brush size and preset and include two settings now it really depends on you if you really want to retain the particular size of the brush you, or if you want to, if you want to retain the particular size you use in creating this brush as the default size you can actually make use of this capture size so let me show you that when you go into to when you go into brush tips you can see right here the size is set to 398 so let's say we just want to set that to 300 now we're going to leave that to 300 and every other thing is okay so now click on that now this include two settings this is really going to enable us automatically switch from any other tool to the brush to whenever we select this particular brush so right here i'm going to put in i'm going to take this capture brush size and include color no include color simply means the col current color we are making use of right now and i don't want that so i'm just going to name these to shading brush one just in case and now i'm going to hit on okay and now that brush has saved for us you can close up the brush settings window now go over to windows again and open up your brush panel when you open up your brush panel and enlarge it you can see that we have the brush right here and you can see that the size is set to 300 as default now let's take a look at the regular brushes in photoshop now you can see that we don't have this icon right here on any of this brush and also the size we don't have it right here now this is going to tell you that we have some custom settings attached to this brush that is really going to make it easy for us to use now let's take a look at all these features so first of all we are going to i'm just going to shift this right here first of all we are going to test this brush icon we have right here the use of it so let's say we are selecting um the clone stamp too and we decide to switch brush right here maybe we want to make use of the hard round brush or maybe a brush with a pressure option if i select any brush right here you can see that we are still selecting the clone stamp too right here but the moment i select this brush is we automatically switch back to the brush too why because we include the two settings right here that is the brush we have right here. now this is telling us that these two can only work with the brush so you can use this across any other brush tool in photoshop now for the size pay so much attention to this blue part the moment i just increase the size a little bit you can see what's happening right there we have an alert sign right there telling us that we have made a little bit of modification to this brush so you can now start using this to paint or do whatever it is you want to do what if you want to reset this brush back to 300 just come down right here and click that it's going to automatically reset the brush back to 300 as you can see right here and now you can see you can also see right here that the alert sign we have right there which is the orange yellow icon we have right there has actually changed back to blue telling us that this brush is having the default size we use in creating this brush so those are the settings attached to this brush and that is how it is really going to be now if you really don't want all these settings alongside with this brush you want this brush to be your free brush which you can use alongside any other tool in photoshop all you just have to do you just need to go back into the brush settings and inside of the brush settings you just also click and create a new brush and just uncheck both settings and once you uncheck these two settings and hit on okay you can actually format this brush any way you want use this brush with any other tool and it's going to be like every other regular brush tool in photoshop so now you can see this so if i select the clone stamp tool and i select this brush you can see that we still have the clone stamp tool selected right here and the moment i just select this we are going to switch back to the brush tool so that is the basic way of how you can create your own pencil like brush in photoshop now i've shown you guys how to create a pencil brush and now i've shown you guys how to create a shading brush that is really going to help you shade your portrait so much and another story will be coming up very soon that is how you can actually improve your sketch now depending we can make use of the digital um, platform or we can make use of the traditional 
platform but just know that it's still going to be the same process of which you can apply in both digital and apply in traditional so but this video is going to be of two part so in these two part i'm going to mix it up making use of for traditional and making use of digital so that is it in this video and if you're new to this channel and you've not subscribed or you've been watching my videos so far and you've not subscribed please consider hitting the subscribe button not just the subscribe button ring the bell icon so that you don't miss any new tips and tricks i'll be posting every week so see you guys in my next video and make sure that you stay creative